Okay, welcome back to AP Stats. This is Dr. Kling. I'm still not affiliated with the College Board. Um, last time <coughs> we talked about the mean of a random variable. And now I'm going to go on to talk about the variance and the standard deviation of a random variable. So the variance and the standard deviation. And what I'm going to do is first show you how to calculate these things and then go back and explain what they are and kind of why why they're calculated the way they are. So I just want to get to how first. So remember we had the random variable to get the mean, okay, so we had the possible values of x. And in case of the uh, <coughs> point count for cards, remember then ace was worth 4, king 3, queen 2, jack 1, everything else nothing. And then we have <coughs> the probability of x, which was you know, 1 out of 13, 1 out of 13, 1 out of 13, 1 out of 13, 9 out of 13. And then we multiplied x times p of x, and I won't go through that. But we multiplied across, and then we added up at the bottom, took the sum of the x times p of x and I can actually write that, write that even a little bit more neatly for me. So let's say the sum of x times p of x. How about that? The sum and we said that was mu of x, the mean. Okay, now we're going to go on and we're going to do some more calculations. And just trust me, I'm going to take x minus mu of x. I'm going to square it, multiply by p of x. And I'll get, again, these values. And then I'll add those up at the bottom. This is a summation sign. It's a uh, sort of a Greek sigma. So the sum of x minus mu of x squared p of x is equal to the variance, uh, also known as sigma squared. That's a that little squirrely thing is a sigma. It's a different sigma. It's a lowercase sigma, and Finally, we can do, take the square root of that answer is sigma, which is our standard deviation. I'm just going to abbreviate that standard deviation. Okay, so let's run to a, cal to a spreadsheet and calculate that. Um, okay, so um, remember the ace was worth four points. King three, queen two, jack one, others zero, and the probabilities <coughs> uh, one thirteenth. I won't bore you with the rest. I'll finish. I'll finish this up uh, by myself. Okay, so I filled in the probabilities, and the next step is to multiply across x times p of x. So we go equals that times that, and again I'll speed through that. Okay, so now we have all the x times p of x's, and now we're going to come here to the mean, and we're going to take the sum of the things at the top. So equals sum, oops, equals the sum, and Okay, and that's the, the mu of x. I, I just put this little mx here. That's mu of x, or the mean of x, is this 0.769. So now I'm going to take the value of x, which over here is 4, subtract off this mean, square it, and then multiply by p of x. So we take equals that minus that, and I'd better anchor that. I'll do that in a second. <clears throat> well, let's see. I'm going to put this in parentheses, and this is a way of, if you're not familiar with spreadsheets, it anchors that to that one point, 
and square it minus p of x or times p of x times p of x okay so that's something and I'm going to do that for the rest of these let's do that quickly and then I'm going to take the sum of all that okay and that's going to be my variance okay and that's my variance and then I take the square root of that which I will do to, I'll just take it to the one half power. And that's my standard deviation. Okay, so let's remember these numbers 1.72 and 1.31. And let's go back here. Okay, so my <coughs> variance, standard deviation, was equal to 1.72 and the standard deviation was equal to 1.31 so the um, and the average point count was 10 thirteenths about 0.7 something like that so that was my mu about 0.7 so the average value of a card in a deck was about was about seven tenths of a point the standard deviation is about 1.3 tenths of a point. So the units are the, are the units of, that I'm measuring here, points in this case. Um, okay, so what in the world does this variance in standard deviation mean? What are we, what are we trying to do with this? Um, what's up with this sigma and the sigma squared? So let me try to give a picture of it. Uh, these, are, these are pictures of seesaws. Um, I guess I'd like you to focus on on this one just because this is what a seesaw looked like uh, back when I was growing up. These are these are real seesaws, and you, you know you could get hurt on one of these, which is probably why you don't see them anymore. I mean, I never saw anyone get hurt on it, but uh, you could go flying up or flying down or whatever. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I want you to take have that picture in mind, a picture of a seesaw, and Imagine a bunch of people balanced, or not balanced necessarily, but standing at various points on a seesaw. You've got somebody here, 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 and they've got different weights and so on. And finding the mean, let's, let's say you had a movable um, center point or, or log holding up the, the seesaw, and you, you could move it. If you wanted to move it to the point where it's perfectly balanced, you just keep moving the 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 point along until here. So let's say this is the point where it's perfectly balanced and we call this the mean. And what the <clears throat> what the variance or the standard deviation measure is sort of how far people are away on average from the mean, from the middle of the seesaw. So if, if everyone was bunched close to the seesaw let me draw some of these examples. So if you had everyone bunched close to the mean, or all the weight bunched close to the mean, it really wouldn't, it wouldn't be a very active seesaw, it wouldn't move very much, and that would suggest low variance. If we had a seesaw with a lot of weight on the ends, like way over here, now you've got the potential for a lot of movement up and down, a lot of violent movement up and down, and that's high variance. So now, our, so, that, so now we sort of understand why we want to measure it. We're trying to measure the average distance from the mean. Is, is what we're trying to get at with these variance standard deviation measures. Now, the question is how to do that. If if we have a scale, and we so we have a scale. Let's say it goes, um, you know, from negative ten, and let's say zero happens to be the mean, and ten here. If we measure along the scale in the basic units, so we 
so we say minus 10, this has a value of minus 10, this has a value of 10, then the negative numbers will cancel out the positive numbers and this will actually look like low variance. If we're going to measure distance, we can't use the scale, the scale itself, we have to use something like the absolute value, absolute value, or the square difference. And so now we're starting to see where that square comes from, why we were taking x minus p of x, or x minus mu of x, and squaring it. Because squaring it allows, makes those negative numbers turn positive, which is what we want because we're measuring distance. And, when, <coughs> and so when we take the square root of the squared number, we're pres it's, a, it's a bit like taking the absolute value. So the, the variance is a, is a squared number, it's a measure of distance, and then the standard deviation, which is the square root of sigma squared, is a, a, looks a lot like an absolute value. So that's why we do the calculations that way. And I guess as a final note, I'll say, well, this looks very painful to carry out by hand on a calculator, and it's certainly a lot easier on a spreadsheet. If you were doing this on a calculator and wanted to automate it, uh, rather than calculating each of these numbers one by one and then adding them up and then doing calculating these one by one, you could create lists. So you could have list 1 be your x variable, list 2 be your p of x, and then you can actually use equations in the calculator. You can set list 3 equal to list 1 times list 2. So once you've entered this data and you use that formula, then these numbers would all pop up in list three, at least these. Then you'd have to find a way to add them. I'm sure there's a way to add numbers in a list, although I've actually never done that. And then you could then go on to create a list four, which would be uh, list one minus this now constant term, the mean of x. Um, squared times list 2 over here and that that would then let you reproduce this column and you add things up and you get this and you take the square root to get this. So there's a little bit of a shortcut you can do on a calculator without having to calculate all the individual cells here but it's really not much. Um, okay and I think I'll stop there.